Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the time or rate needed to um, satisfy our given requirements as far as having an, a given initial time, initial um, investment as well as a final um, investment or final value. So we're given a present value, we're given a final value. Now we just don't know how long do we need um, to compound that interest or at what rate. So the first two problems, we're gonna be finding the time. And for the second two problems, we're gonna be finding the um, interest rate. Now. Uh, I'm doing this video in conjunction with my other two compound interest videos, but if you have not already gone through the videos for uh, solving exponential and logarithmic equations, I would recommend that you stop where you're at now, go ahead and go through solving exponential and logarithmic equations, and then come back to that because I'm going to use the solving techniques for, um, for exponential and logarithmic in this video, and if you haven't come across that or you have no idea what that is, it's probably going to get a little confusing on how I'm doing this. And the reason why I have to use solving exponential logarithmic equation techniques is because now, um, or especially for finding t, we're f or uh, p equals, yeah. Um, you can see that for um, continuous interest, our r and our t are in exponents. So we got to we got to figure out how to solve for r and t when they're in the exp when they're in, as in the power. And we can't use our normal solving techniques. We're going to have to use solving logarithmic and exponential equation techniques to help us with that. All right. But anyways, the first step that we're going to be doing for any of these problems, even if you have no idea what you're doing, if remember if you're given a word problem instead of like this, just identify the information like I did, and now take the formulas that you're take the formulas that you um, are provided and then plug them in and we'll and I'll show you what to do next so um, this is a very common type of problem that they say is they say you know we're given a present value of three thousand dollars we want your final value to be double the initial amount and we are going to in, uh, invest your money at three percent three point six percent weekly how long is it going to take for your money to double basically so if we know our present value is 3,000, well, for $3,000 to double, that just means that's going to be 6,000, right? 6,000. So uh, what I'm going to do is take 6,000 equals my present value of 3,000 um, times 1 plus 0 0.036 divided by weekly, so there's 52 weeks in a year. Um, raised to 52 and then t is what we do not know so we need to solve for t okay so the first thing that we're, that we're gonna want to do is I can go ahead and divide out this 3,000 let me grab another color here so I can divide by 3,000 on both sides because that's just multiplying by that uh, exponent and when I do 6,000 divided by 3,000 I get the number 2 there. So that's 2 is equal to. Now I'm probably going to want to simplify this and again it gets very very important to when doing this is trying to uh, trying to use your calculator to make sure that we are um, not approximating our answers in any form. So I'm going to do uh, 1 plus uh, point 0, 0.036, oops, I'm sorry, 0 0.036, so I'm going to use my um, order of operations first, I'm going to do 0 0.036 divided by 52, so 0 0.036 divided by 52, and then I'm going to add 1 to that, and that gives me 1.00, let's write it in there, again, this is an approximation by the calculator, so times, um, let's call that 52t. Okay, now we need to get rid of this exponent, right? So what I basically need to do to solve for t, I need to get rid of this base. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the log of both sides. Now, what's interesting here is when you take the log of 2, that's going to give you some you know, decimal answer, right? I mean so forth. But what is going to be our base? Well, our base has to be that answer, right? Well, what's fortunately, what's nice about this is the log, you know, of that answer, or let's just even write in, the log base 1.0 dot 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 dot, all of that, 
you know, for instance, log base 3 of 3 is just equal to 1, right? And if that's raised to a power x, then that's equal to x. So therefore, if I take the log base of this, it's just going to leave me this answer, which is 52t. But the log base of 1.0 dot, 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 dot of 2 is going to be some number, right? So therefore, what I have to use is use the change of base formula, since my calculator does not recognize that as a base. So it's going to look something crazy, but it's going to look like this. It's going to be log base 1.00069230 raised to the second power, or of 2, is equal to 52t. Okay. Then all I'm well, let's go ahead and figure out what that number is. I'm kind of running out of space. So I'm going to use the change of base formula. Now to calculate that, sorry, I probably should have wrote that. So to calculate that using the change of base formula, I can basically use ln or log. I can do, I'll just use base 10. I'll do log of 2 divided by the log base 10 of 1.00069230. Now remember, I haven't changed this in my calculator. That answer is still there. So the reason why that's important is I don't want to type in this whole answer because then I'd be approximating the answer. I want to use the complete answer. So what I'm going to type in, I'm going to use my change of base formula. That equals 52t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do log of 2, end parentheses, divided by log of second answer. And I'm going to get that value. And that's going to give me I'm running out of space. Um, I can write it right here. That gives me 1,001.55. Nah, I'm not wrong. Hmm. All right, well, let's just write it down below. That gives me 1,001.559.128 equals 52t. Well, now, to solve for t, all I need to do is divide by 52. And when I just take my answer now and I just click divided by 52, my final answer is t is equal to 19 point, I'll just round to the hundredth, 2, 6. Okay, so that means it'll take you almost 20 years, or almost 19, or more than 19 years to double your money at earning an interest rate of 3.6% compounded weekly. Whew, okay. So let's try to get to the next one. Um, so now I want to triple my value. So that's going to be 750 times 750, or 750 plus 750 plus 750, which would be 50, which would be 2250. Right, 2250. Perfect. So my final value is 2250. Present value is 750. Um, now this is compounded continuously. So therefore, I'm going to be using this formula. So it's going to be E raised to the r, which is 0 0.0425, times t, which we do not know. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 750. And that's going to give me 3. Well, that's money, right? Okay, so that gives me 3 equals e to the 0 0.0425t. Now, to get rid of law or to get rid of a base 1.00, we need to take the log of that base. Well, to get rid of e, we need to take the log of base e, which is just ln. So I'm going to take the ln, which is base e of e, both sides, and what that's going to leave me now is ln of 3 is equal to 0.0425t. To solve for t, I just divide by 0.0425. So therefore, t equals ln of 3 divided by 0 0.0425. Now, it was much easier than the first problem. Now, I can just uh, plug that into my calculator. So I'll just take in ln divided by, oops, I'm sorry, ln of 3. So I type ln of 3, and then close the parentheses, and then divided by 0 0.0425. And that gives me 25.85 as I round to the nearest 100. So therefore, that's going to take you 25 years to triple your investment, earning an interest rate of 4.25.
OK, so that's how you figure out t with logarithms and natural logarithms. Now let's go ahead and figure out what r is going to be, or how to find r. Um, for a regular compound interest, it's, it's going to be much easier because we're not having to solve for uh, our exponent anymore. Um, but it's still going to be a little bit kind of crazy as far as our math. So again, let's plug in our information. So we have final value of 1,000 equals an initial value of $100 times 1 plus my interest rate I do not know divided by n, which is, oh wait, this is continuously. Sorry about that. I didn't read it. So e to the r, which we don't know, and then t is going to be 8. Okay. So now this one's just going to be very similar to what we did um, before in the last example, except instead of solving for t, we're solving for r. So I divide by 100. Okay, And that's going to leave me with 10 equals e to the 8r. Then what I'll do is I'll just take the ln of both sides. The ln of e is equal to 1, which is going to leave me that 8r. So then I have ln of 10 equals 8r. Then I'll just divide by 8. Divide by 8, r equals ln of 10 divided by 8. So now, again, I take my calculator and I do ln of 10, close the parentheses, divided by 8, and that's going to give me 0 0.28, 0 0.2, actually, I'm going to round it to the nearest 100, so that's going to be 0 0.29. So therefore, as percentage, I would need to earn 29%. <laughs> for me to go from $100 to $1,000 in eight years compounded uh, continuously. So um, pretty high, pretty high uh, interest rate, right? You're not even doubling your money. I mean, you're trying to, you're trying to earn a lot of money um, over into a small amount of time. So compound interest works best over long periods of time. But over a short period of time, you're going to have to have a really high interest rate. All right, last but not least, let's find R in our compounds, um, in our con regular compound formula. So I have $18,000, or I want to uh, earn $18,000 with an initial investment of $500. Uh, I want to know what interest rate that's going to take if I'm compounded semi annually. Well, once a year is one, semi annually is going to be twice a year, so that's going to be two times two times 10. OK, so again, first thing we want to do is uh, eliminate the exponent. So I'm going to divide by 500. And that should give me 36, I believe. 3.6. Oh, 18,000. Yep, 36. OK, and that's 1 plus r divided by 2 raised to the 20th. OK, now to get rid of some, raising something to the 20th power, I need to take the 20th root of both sides, which is not going to give me a nice number, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to take the 20th root on both sides. Now, in my calculator, I have an option where if I type in math, there's a variable in front, OK? And I can write in what root I want to take. So I'm going to take the 20th power of 36 which gives me this crazy number, which again is going to be approximated by my calculator, of 1.196231199. And that's going to be equal to 1 plus r divided by 2. Now, to solve for r, all I simply need to do is follow my operations. So, so I solve for r, I'm going to subtract a 1 on both sides. That gives me 0.196231199 equals r divided by 2. To undo dividing by 2, I'm just going to multiply by 2. OK, now I'm going to do this in my calculator so I don't make a mistake. And then um, I get r equals 0.39. Now again, this is just a percent, so I'm just going to round it to the nearest tenth. But 0.39, written as percentage, is going to be 39%. That means if I want to invest $500 and I want to earn eight, get $18,000 at the end of 10 years, I need to earn 39%. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine uh, your time and rate if given final value and future value, as well as uh, compounding in years. Thanks.